Blessings all. My name is David Ewan, and I head up the Bravehearted Men's Ministry at the Resurrection Center with Pastors Jose and Melly Martinez. At this moment, I would like to give a short reflection of gratitude to all the mothers as we prepare for Mother's Day on Sunday, May 10th. Although I'm not a parent, I'm one of nine children and remember clearly the woman that God called my mother to be. I also watch the nurturing and comfort my wife gives to our nephews, nieces, and the children at our church. I see why God created women as shown in the book of Genesis. In the Bible, Proverbs offers wisdom and Psalms offers heartfelt worship. You see, Proverbs 13, 25 says, Let your father and mother have joy, and let her who gave birth to you rejoice. Proverbs 31, 29 says, There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. And Psalms 127, verse 3 through 4 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. I'm here to celebrate Mother's Day with you all. This year, it is Sunday, May 10th. The history is as follows. Mother's Day has been set aside as President Woodrow Wilson said on May 9th, 1914, when Congress declared the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. President Wilson said that this day has been set aside as a time for public expression of our love and reverence for the mothers of our country. What can I say about mothers that has not already been said many times before? The answer is, I doubt seriously there's anything I can say that would be new to you or would be something you have never heard before. You see, scriptures in the Bible offers a celebration in the Bible. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. And that's in Proverbs chapter 31. So allow me to give you three brief and simple thoughts. Think about this, especially on Sunday, May 10th, Mother's Day. The recognition of a mother should never be forgotten or taken for granted. The resourcefulness of a mother should be marveled at, and the responsibility of a mother should be respected. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. And this comes from the Ten Commandments, such as honor thy father and thy mother. I'm definitely not qualified to stand up here today and give a sermon on what it means to be a modern day mother. Believe me, I don't have a clue. I'm not a mother, and I've recently learned that I will never be. That's why I'm thankful that the Bible deals with the issue very well. That way we're not relying on my expertise, or lack thereof, but we're relying on God's experience, and that beats the all the so-called pop culture experts. You see, mothers face so many challenges these days. I mean, you never knew practice would be such a dirty word. But you've got Susie, who needs to be at ballet practice, and Johnny, who needs to be at soccer practice, and Billy, who's got a baseball game on the other side of town, and Sally, who's supposed to be at gymnastics. But she's upset because you're running late. And of course, once practice is over, the evening saga of dinner begins, and so on and so on. Mothers are expected to do it all. One of the funniest thing to me is my mother's purse. When I was a little boy growing up, I was amazed at my mother's purse. You see, my mom's purse had everything in it. I mean, there was nothing I ever needed that couldn't be found in the almighty purse. Mom, do you have a Band-Aid? Sure, it's in my purse. Mom, do you have a sewing kit? Sure, it's in my purse. Mom, can I have a milkshake? Well, maybe not. See, mothers of today do the work of God. And the way they do that is 
they do the work of God by having their children walk in the way of the Lord. We live in the society Jeremiah spoke of, a society that does not know how to blush. So what do I mean by that? So with these things in mind, I think it is better for a mother to raise her kids than a village to raise them. We need godly mothers and fathers who will stand and say, I will teach my children to walk in the way of the Lord. We cannot let the important things in our children's lives be left up to chance or up to someone else's false teachings. We must stand up and be accountable as parents for our children's spiritual safety. In Proverbs 22.6, Proverbs 22.6, we are given some clear advice. Train, out, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Let's talk about the best Mother's Day gifts. These are A words. Give her affirmation. Give her affection. Give her acknowledgement. Give her attention. Give her appreciation. Those are the best Mother's Day gifts. Do not buy her anything that plugs in. If something needs to be plugged in, she will only see it as a tool. Also, do not get her any exercise equipment or videos, as this will lead to six months of her asking you why you think she needs to exercise in the first place. And I guarantee you that you will never have the right answer. Abraham Lincoln said, I remember my mother's prayers, and they have followed me. They have clung to me all my life. All that I am and hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. And that was President Abraham Lincoln. On Sunday, May 10th, a Mother's Day, we say thank you to all our mothers for their undying love, their untiring work, their unselfish giving, and their undivided devotion. My name is David Ewan, and I head up the Braveheart and Ministry at the Resurrection Center. Remember to give your mother, your aunt, your wife, something special that will warm her heart, that will show your love for her. My name is David Ewan, and this is the Resurrection Center.